Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 127. And uh, for this one, Andrew and I, we are outside the country firing on GG Poker. Aren't you supposed to say this is a very special episode? Dude, this is a very special episode. You guys are gonna love You're it. You're in there, you guys are gonna love it. We've got a ton of things um, throughout the episode that are a lot of fun, so don't miss a minute of it. And uh, if you are signing up to GG Poker to play in some WSOP events, then use the promo code MUGS. That'll get you some extra bonus tournament tickets. And Andrew, Andrew and I, we are gonna be streaming. We're gonna be doing some meetup games on there, so stay tuned for that. All right, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Andrew and I fly from Las Vegas to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, where we'll be staying for three weeks to fire in as many online bracelet events as we can and a handful of other tournaments too. We arrive at the house, it's absolutely amazing. Wow. So welcome to your house, amigos. Beautiful. Private chefs greet us with quesadillas, margaritas, and fresh guacamole. My room's incredible, there's a huge bathroom connected to it. My favorite part is the balcony that overlooks our pool, the ocean, and the famous arch. It's the perfect location for us to focus on playing without any other distractions. I'm loving everything about it here. Soon after arrival, we go to Costco where they have one and a half meter hot dogs that I imagine are very spicy for only $30. What a deal. Our first night, the chefs hook it up with an authentic Mexican dinner. We're living the dream. It's not all margaritas, beautiful beaches, and fun and games though. Okay, it's a lot of those things, but we're also busy making videos. Since I'm mostly a cash game player, I'm spending my free time trying to improve my tournament play. I'm studying a ton on training sites, I also reached out to one of the world's all-time best players, Daniel Negreanu, for some advice. Yeah, I mean, I'm just having some anxiety because um, last year I went like 0 for 8 in WSOP events, kind of embarrassing. I had to tell people about it, and um, I was just wondering if you had any tips that, uh, that you could share. Brad, you have to understand that everything you do at the poker table conveys information. What I'm going to be... I'm gonna be playing online and uh, I'm gonna be using an avatar, so I don't think that that is even relevant at all. Brad, you just gotta trust me on this one, all right? Anyways, I gotta go, because Phil Ivey's on the other line. Now that I have some pointers from an expert, I feel really confident. Ish. I hop on GG Poker to get used to the software. First, I play a small stakes cash game, and flop a set my second hand. I take this dude on two streets to a final destination in Value Town. I'm really liking this site so far. I then test the small stakes tournament streets and min cash in my first tournament on the platform. Later on, it's time to play the opener. It kicks off the WSOP out here. It's a hundred dollar event. On bullet number one, we make it on to day two, but we don't have much of a stack. We have 12.6 big blinds. The next day, we're pumped to resume play. It appears that we're not far from the money. Initially, it says in the top right that 3,482 players remain at the initial 29,306 total entries and that 3,039 players will make the money, so I don't need to last too long to at least get paid. But then once cards are dealt, for some reason, the amount of players left is 4,599 and 3,039 players still get paid, so I'm confused and much further from the money than I originally thought. About 20 minutes in, I have a tiny stack and I defend my big blind with queen five of diamonds after the hijack raises. The flop is nine five deuce with two clubs. We have middle pair, but there won't be many cards that we'll want to see on the turn. We check to the pre-flop aggressor. He bets less than a third pot. He's gonna have air a lot of the time. I don't want a flat. I go for the check raise. If I get called even by an over pair, I'll still have five outs. I'm hoping for a fold. We don't get it. The player has one of the worst hands we could be up against with queen nine and we're drawing nearly dead. The turn and river unfortunately give us no help. That's it, we are done. Out of the 4,600 players that made it on to day two, we get 3,765th and finish outside the money. The good news is that there's a 525 WSOP Super Turbo Bounty six max that we're about to jump into. That's what we're playing now. Here I defend my big blind with queen 10 offsuit, flop a gutter with one over. Apparently, Cutoff watches the vlogs and says, we met one time at Running Up in Reno. He bets half pot and tells me good luck. Since it appears that he wants me to win, I might as well give him an opportunity to fold and let me have the pot. I raise the 2700. The cutoff doesn't want me to win that badly. He calls. The turn is another eight. It's no help and it reduces the amount of two pair and set combos that I was repping on the flop. I check. My plan is to give up. The cutoff checks back. The river is the 10 of diamonds giving us a pair. I have some showdown value at least. I check, the player doesn't check back. He fires for 60% of the pot. I don't get the sense that I'm good. I lay it down. I like how the cutoff tells me nice hand after he's the one that wins it. 
Very little happens for the next several levels, except my stack gets short. I have 14 big blinds and pocket nines on the button. The hijack min raises, the cut off three bets, it's on us. I don't like the idea of folding. I think we're just gonna rip it. Good luck us. You can hear Andrew talking upstairs. You can also hear that super baller music that Gigi plays during all ends. I'm feeling good about this. The hijack folds, the cutoff makes the call. Yeah, all right, let's flip. Come on. Keep it low. All right. That is a big, big swing for us. We win, and now we've got a decent sized stack to work with. Next, we defend our big blind with 10-5 suited. The flop comes 9-8-7. We have an open ender with one over and a backdoor flush draw. I checked to the pre-flop razor. He started the hand with about 20 big blinds. He fires for over half pot. This is another hand that we don't want to flat with out of position. Yeah, we'll just check jam here. Before the baller music's even finished playing, we get snap called. People always have top pair against us on nine high boards, I guess. The turn is the king of hearts. It's a terrible card, reducing the number of outs we have because we can't hit the jack, 10, or six of hearts anymore. That's okay though, we don't need those cards. The river is the jack of spades. Not only do we suck out to win a big pot, but we also collect the opponent's bounty. The hand immediately after, we have a six offsuit in the small blind, folds to us. Big blind has a short stack with about 15 big blinds. We have an above average hand, go after him and his bounty with, so we're all in again. We get snap called, which is frightening. Till we see the opponent has ace deuce of spades, we have him dominated. All right, we're big favorite here. This is right after that last hand. No four, no four, no deuce. No four, no deuce, no spade. Fuck yeah, all right. Two hands in a row, we knock people out. So got a couple bounties, off to a good start here. In level 13, we pick up a hand that can be tricky to play from the small blind when we're facing a button raise. Jack 10 off, we're gonna call this. And uh, we'll see where it leads us. A few of the jack of spades here. I was gonna check to the pre-flop aggressor, see what he does. Check it, check it dirty. Whew, we have the second nuts. I think we're gonna go ahead and check this again. See if anyone bets at it. I imagine we've got the best hand. All right. We're gonna try and make this look like a bluff. Big Blind goes into the tank for quite a while. It's very unlikely that we're gonna be up against anything better. Eventually, the player makes the call and the button folds. Turns out that we get called by a worse flush. It's a pretty sizable pot. We're happy to win that. And we're in good shape. We could always be in gooder shape though. Like right here when we pick up pocket aces in the small blind, there's nothing sweeter than being dealt the world's number one hand in a six max WSOP event because in six max, players often rep big hands as bluffs. This time, we actually have one. And it's the biggest one of those hands. The button min raises, I have a few options with the stack sizes. I consider flatting to give the stack on my left an opportunity to jam as a squeeze. That's a huge mistake if the big blind flats though. We'd be going three ways to the flop out of position. Consider jamming because I want to make it look like I'm possibly bluffing or getting it in light to go after a bounty or two. I don't hate this option, but I don't want both opponents folding. Ultimately, I go with a tiny three bet. I like this because it could still induce a bluff shove from either opponent since they might think they could have some fold equity. Three betting ensures that no one's going to see a flop without paying extra. Baby Yaga on my left, folds. This should be enough. All right, there we go. Come on. Seven, snow seven. Yes! No club, no club. All right. Boom. It's a huge pot. We've got almost six times starting stack, and we just collect another bounty. Third bounty of the day. And we might see what happens here. See if, oh, we're gonna get it in if he rips. Donkadactyl does not rip. Still, we're coasting right into the break. All right, we're on break. I don't know where we're at in this thing, in this tournament, but we have a lot of chips. We have a pile of chips. Oh, turns out we're 23rd out of uh, 933 remaining and 2188 bought in. There's still three minutes to late reg, but we're off to a good start. Picked up three bounties, and actually we've almost gotten our buy-in back, so just gotta keep it up. 
Once the break ends, we continue to get in situations where we're going to have the range advantage and where we'll have equity, so we keep the foot on the gas pedal to try and chip up. As the big stack, it's okay if a hand or two doesn't go our way. Luckily, that's not the case here as I keep betting with gutters on boards that have high cards and as the preflop aggressor, that's mostly going to favor me since I didn't get three bet. These one-third pot bets continuously get the job done. No one's giving me resistance or check raising me because I haven't shown down any bluffs. My image is very good. I think that's three hands in a row where we've taken it down without really having a hand. As the stack increases, my VPIP is also increasing. You can see next to everyone's name there's a number. My VPIP is currently 32. Keep an eye on that because it's going to get quite high. Right now it's on fire because I'm running hot, as is Triton AA, but that's about to change for him. I've got A6 suited on the button. It's a standard open for me. The big blind defends, which I'm okay with. The flop comes Ace Jack Deuce with two hearts and one spade. The opponent checks. We have a hand that's strong, but not one that I necessarily want to go all three streets with, so I check back for deception to avoid getting check raised and to gain some more information from my opponent on the turn. The seven of hearts comes out. The player checks again. It's very unlikely that he'd do this with a hand that has us beat. There's no reason for him to think that I'm going to start firing the turn myself after checking the flop having a medium heart hit the turn. I probably would have C-bet the flop with most of my flush draws, so my hand is somewhat capped. It's also vulnerable, so I've got to protect. We do have to bet this one. I'm never gonna have a, f okay, good. I think I'm gonna bet for value here. I, get, I did get snap called. I think I can get calls out of jacks here, so I'm gonna bet. And uh, yeah, we, we win it. We got called by pocket tens. So it's another nice one for us. We've got eight times starting stack, and we're doing great. As you can see, the player on my left is brand new. This hand isn't anything special, but it's important to note for the next hand when I've got pocket eights and I'm first to act. I like it. Pocket eights. Let's get a fold from freshly baked. Ah, shit. It's a rip for 20 big lines. That's a big portion of our stack. I don't think, I, I opened from the low jack. He is ripping it from the high jack. Oh man, this is so big. This is a spot that I don't enjoy being in. It's primarily a cash game player. I'm not familiar with the situation. And I don't know off the top of my head what my calling range should be, especially when bounties are at play. Since I opened early and the player with a VPIP of only 18 immediately shoves an early position after me, my thought is that I'm gonna be dominated a lot or flipping it best. I don't have much invested. I'm having zero trouble navigating the table so far. This is the first time I've really gotten any resistance. If I call and lose, I'll still have a decent sized stack, but there will be a larger stack on my left, which I always try to avoid. If I fold, I take a lower variance approach. I can continue to push people around and hopefully build my stack that way. Uh, I've got a big stack here. I'd like to just keep it. So I'm just gonna go ahead. All right, that was not a good flop for us. You guys have heard my thought process and saw what I did. Now let's hear what I should have done according to two-time WPT champion and founder of PokerCoaching.com, Jonathan Little. Whenever you're facing an all-in in a poker tournament, you have a straight math problem. So you need to figure out how much equity your hand has against your opponent's range and how much equity you need to have to profit. Now in this scenario, we have to put in 69,000 to win a pot that's gonna go up to 163, but you can collect a bounty if you win. At PokerCoaching.com, we have the bounty calculator. We have full instructions for how to use it there. This tells you how much progressive bounties are worth. In this scenario, with 40% of the field remaining, a bounty is worth about 26,000 chips, okay? So knowing that, our equation to figure out the equity we need to call becomes 69, that's how much more we have to call, divided by the whole pot, which is our opponent's chips, our chips, small blind, big blind ante, and the amount you get from the bounty, which we use a calculator to determine was 26, 69 divided by 189 equals 36 and percent equity. You actually want to profit though. So you want to have more like 38 percent equity. So let's now run your hand pocket eights against a few ranges to see how it does. If the opponent is super duper tight, like no one's going to be this tight. Let's suppose he only goes all in with like nines are better and ace jack suited and better. Okay. Super, super tight. Against this range, you see you have 36 and percent equity. So tiny, tiny loser, but no one's this tight. In reality, like if I'm in this scenario, what am I jamming with? I mean, this is about as tight as I would ever even consider jamming. 
And in this spot, you see you have 46% equity, which is way, way more than the 38 required. So this is going to be a call against virtually everyone besides the absolute tightest players. I know you said you don't want to lose an extra 69,000 chips here because then you no longer cover the player on your left, but you actually still cover everyone else at the table by a decent margin. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. And in reality, you are in such great shape here against your opponent's range that I would call, if this was for all of my chips, half my chips, any amount of chips, I'm literally never going to fold here. If all that math was difficult to follow, what Jonathan was basically saying is, I'm a huge tournament fish for laying that down. Cool to see how to use just one of the many tools from PokerCoaching.com that you'll have at your disposal if you become a member. There are a bunch of other tools, including preflop guides for various stack sizes and push fold charts. I have a link down below in the description box. It's been incredibly helpful for me to study those. I highly recommend checking them out. It doesn't take me too long to find another spot that's tough for me after that with Ace Jack offsuit. If this guy rips it, we are gonna call. Yeah, we're gonna call this one. Never mind, we're gonna fold. We only wanna face a rip and then a re rip. Let's see what these guys have. Sixes, ace, ten. Hmm. Well. Yeah, we would have gotten smoked by a boat. Wow, what a crazy flop that is. Again, I don't know if folding is correct there, especially since I could have picked up two bounties. It's easy to be results oriented. Perhaps I'm placing too much value on preserving chips. Typically, I just prefer to be the one betting, raising, and going all in, rather than calling off in spots where I don't know if I'm ahead or not. It's not necessarily a great way to look at it though. All right, so this is the lobby right now. We're in 28th, got 44 big blinds almost, um, 569 left out of 2,214, and uh, top 314 make the money, but we're gonna try and do, we're gonna try and run deep in this one time. We pick up aces again and min raise to 12,000. Our VPIP is a wild 40%. No one should believe we ever have anything, especially Tiger King in the big blind, who already has a quarter of a stack invested in the pot. Let's get it in with them. Come on, you have to rip. You, you have 21,000, come on. That one hurts. How do we not pick up anything there? The very next hand, Tiger King shoves from the small blind. you would have a number of weak holdings, including some that we're even ahead of. We're getting two to one on a call. We have an opportunity to collect another bounty. We call. Come on, have live cards. Okay, queen or seven? Queen or seven? Not great. Queen or seven? Queen or seven? Damn it. Went for a bounty, didn't get one. Later we've got ace 10 suited on the button. We play probably the worst hand of the tournament. I'm in raise, big blind defends, we're heads up. The flop is a dream. Fuck yeah, top two. All right, I'm gonna bet tiny. Once we bet, we immediately get check raised. It's fantastic. With my 46% VPIP and relentless C bet strategy, Triton AA has had enough with the passive play. He fights back, but he does so at the wrong time for him and the perfect time for us. My thinking is that I'm so excited to get this in. The pot is huge. If he has any pair of draw, he's gonna be calling a jam by me since he's gonna get an amazing price. I'll let my emotions get the best of me and shove. What I should have done is tank and then call to keep his bluffs in. If I flat, I'll probably shove a huge percentage of the time on the turn. Instead, I give him an opportunity to get off the hook if he has nothing, and it appears that's exactly what he has. Maybe we should have, probably just should have flatted there. Our action likely cost us another 67,000 in chips. If we get close to the money, that opponent is replaced by a new player in the big blind, but pick up a tell on that allows me to open from the button with a slightly wider range than I normally would. Interesting spot. I noticed that uh, big blind was trying to take all his time for every action. I think he's trying to squeak his way into the money. He seems to be concerned about it, so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and bet here and hope that the small blind folds and then hope that the big blind also folds. He seems to be playing, I think he's, it says VP is 28%, but I think he's also pretty happy to, uh, to fold into the money. So yeah, you see him taking all his time again and then he's gonna fold. So that's something that's good to know because I can kind of just uh, relentlessly go after those two people as a big stack. All right, we're getting very, very close to the money. I'm just gonna go ahead and raise it up here. Min raise, I imagine people are not gonna be, I think people are gonna give me a lot of respect here since I'm under the gun and uh, we are so close to the money. Tiger King might even fold here. 
But if he rips and we call, fuck. All right. Eight, seven, one time. We get the bounty potentially. That is an interesting flop. Okay. Yes. Picked up the bounty, won the pot. That's not a good day for Tiger King. We get lucky there and we're only 16 away from the money in a WSOP event with an enormous stack. We've got queen five suited in the small blind. I raised the three big blinds thinking that freshly baked may not want to get involved in a large pot with a player who has them covered by a lot. Five players get knocked out in a few seconds. Now we're only 11 players away from the money bubble bursting. Freshly baked calls. We don't have a flop where we're going to have much equity if we're behind. I still think the opponent isn't going to call light with many speculative hands right now. For that reason, I choose to take a stab at it to see if we can win a decent sized pot with minimal risk. The player thinks for a while. Eventually he calls. The turn is another four. I have no clue what I might be up against, but we could potentially even be drawing dead. Okay, this is not good. We're gonna kinda shut down here. We've invested a lot of money into this. The opponent checks back, which opens the door for us to turn our hand into a bluff on the river. I don't think that he'd do that with trips or something like ace jack or king jack. Maybe he thinks we're trapping him with a big hand. Some chance he's doing that to us. The river is the deuce of clubs. Every available draw on the flop misses. You can see in the top left that there are only 323 players remaining and 314 get paid. So we're now nine away from the money. I'm in a big pot in which I think it's likely that my opponent doesn't have a hand that he wants to go all in with. The devil on my shoulder telling me to apply maximum pressure, even though I'm not entirely certain what hands I play this way and jam with for value. Who cares? Let's go for it. This first tournament life. Let's see, if Yes, we get the bluff through. That is huge. Fuck yeah. I know I probably shouldn't get this excited, but I'm also not a robot and I have a ton of fun playing these events. All right, hand for hand now. Get a big stack. We have 10, 13 times starting stack, and we have a shack of diamonds. Oh, are we in the money? We might be in the money now. So people are gonna be ripping uh, pretty light, I imagine, and we're gonna be getting it in with some of them, especially given uh, the bounty situation. Got everyone covered. All right, we're just gonna call. See what we got. Flipping, let's go. Ace or jack, ace or jack. F 10 ball? Damn it, all right, well we're not winning this one. Uh, that one would have been nice. We lose a massive pot, but we've officially made the money. I imagine the action's gonna pick up even more now that the money bubble has burst. We've got ace jack in the big blind. If anyone rips, we're gonna be calling. And yeah, we're gonna call here. Maybe we don't call here. Yeah, I guess we're gonna fold. Jesus. Okay. Ace queen, ace six of clubs. Not a good flop for us. And uh, yeah, we would have lost that one. Yep. Good fold by us. It's a little bit results oriented, but. Maybe, maybe it's just a standard fold anyway. Not sure. Jiggities. We've got jiggities, boys. And we're going to, we're gonna rip it. No right way to play jiggities. This hand sparks a very exciting string of several hands in a row that are crazy. I'm gonna leave the footage completely unedited so you can go through all the emotions with me. I think we just made a pay jump. So some people might be waiting for that. Jack, Jack one time. Please be a Jack. Please come out, Jack. Hi. This is a huge pot. Wow. Oh man, we should get voted up or drawn dead. Um, but we do win a side pot, I think. I think the bigger stack called us. Okay, so we still ended up with about the same stack that we ripped with. All right, we're ripping this one. Problem is that we get called lighter with, uh, we haven't really won an all-in in a while, actually, so. Fold it, swing theory. Don't go after my, uh, thank you. All right, chipped up. Ace, 10 of clubs, we're ripping this one. Yeah, no. Baby boy, if baby boy calls, that'd be great. Or the creator, we do not want swing theory to call.
Call, call creator. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, another flip. Can we win a flip one time? That'd be great. All right, we just lost a ton of all-ins in a row. That would that one would have been big. We won a lot in the beginning, but uh, they're not going our way now. I think we, I think we get this in here. I'm not sure. Yep, our turn. Come on, let us win. I don't really like jamming here, but this is the right play to make. Eight big blinds or something. Maybe eight and a half. It's just full swing theory. Under the gun here, buddy. You don't want to play. You don't need to do it. Just fold. We don't want, we don't really want to call here. All right. F okay, this is fine actually. F three ball. Three, 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 three. God damn it. Lost every all in so far. Oh, this hurts. Back to being a short stack. But we have ace king, all right. This is so this is so wild. Not one at all in a long time. 198 players left. I'm not sure uh, we're ripping here for sure. Maybe we're getting a three-way all in and triple up. That'd be great. I imagine freshly baked's gonna call with almost anything. 10-4, please let me win this one. No 10, no four. There we go. Got the double up. Whew. This has been a wild few minutes. A6, we're gonna get this in too. No one else does. Like every hand for the last, I don't know how many hands, like six or something. Freshly Big just thinking about it. He's got a chance of two bounties if he calls here because Baby Boy is almost for sure gonna, I mean, come on. Let's get, this is a huge bounty. Six, one time, six. Heart, no, damn it, we're pretty much dead. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That would've been a big bounty. Without very much luck in those six hands in a row that we went all in, we find ourselves with King Four of Hearts and about three big blinds in the low jack. Our VPIP is 52%, which is insane, although playing all those hands hasn't been working out too well for us lately. Let's see if we can turn it around here with only 160 of the initial 2,200 players remaining. Okay. King or four, please. Or hearts. Damn it, they flopped to seven. King or four, king or four. All right, that's it for us. Good run. We, uh... We got a lot of bounties and uh, regular prize of 700, so total was 1325. That's good, we didn't cash in the $100 tournament that we thought we were going to. We did cash in this, so good, uh, good start to the series. This was my second tournament that I played and we'll be firing, firing in a lot more. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. All right, fun episode. That was a really special episode. It was a special episode. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this, we're gonna be doing the meetup game stuff and we're gonna be streaming. Andrew's been streaming quite a bit. I'm gonna hop on that and uh, use the promo code MUGS to get you the free bonus tournament tickets when you do a minimal of $20 deposit. I feel home. like I was supposed to say something more when you brought me on to be here in the intro and the outro, but I'm just kind of sitting here and like nodding and stuff. Yeah, you're here for channel support. All right. 
Uh, also, check out PokerCoaching.com. It's been helping me out a lot. Um, I've cashed in a few WSOP events, and uh, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to do that without studying those charts, and um, the 30-day tournament challenge has helped me a ton too. So I have a link down below in the description box for that. Okay, guys, hope you're doing well. Stay safe, good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.